Um, wanna wanna do something a little bit different tonight, Amen. Uh, I'm gonna be coming out of Genesis, Amen. Be coming out of Genesis, Amen. Just feel led by the Lord to do something, Amen. That I've been meaning to do for some years, Amen. And uh, it's probably been about three years exactly, Hallelujah. But uh, God gave me the green light tonight, Amen. And so, Hallelujah. And so if you're here tonight or if you're listening, amen, by way of, hallelujah, uh, via the internet, amen, uh, this is one of them where I believe that, uh, that God has chosen you to be here for this, amen. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, amen. Um, I think it's a regular week at Philly, amen. So prayer every day, amen. Uh, uh, Thursday evening prayer, hallelujah, and church on Sunday, amen, hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody heard about the Atlanta trip? Anybody heard some good things about Atlanta? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. It was such a blessing, man. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Good to be back into, in the service of the Lord. Amen. I'll be missing teaching. Amen. A break is good, but I'll be missing, amen, being used by the Lord. Amen. To bring forth his word. And so let's begin looking at Genesis 1. Amen. Genesis 1. In verse 1, you had anything else, pretty? All right. All right, Genesis 1 and verse 1, and we're just going to read a little bit, and I want y'all to just hang tight with me. Amen. Um, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens, the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. Father, we pray you had a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the exposition, and most holy word. I pray, God, that you'd allow your anointing to come upon me. Shake me, Daddy, and fill me with your spirit, Lord, and use me as David Stone tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk with you tonight about cosmology. Cosmology, all right? Can you say that word with me? Cosmology, amen. Some Buddha I have that word, amen, so they can see it up there, see how it's, how it's spelled, amen. Cosmology is the study of the universe. Amen. And when I say the universe, amen, I don't want you to think about the planets and all of that. I want you to think about God's creation. Somebody say God's creation. God's creation. That's the cosmos. The Bible uses the word cosmos in the Greek over and over again. And it's all about God's creation. All right. Cosmology is the study of God's creation. The physical and the material elements of that creation. OK, I want to talk with you about cosmology because your concept of cosmology, what creation looks like, the origins of it, the procedures in which God took to bring it into being. Your hallelujah, uh, 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 your concept of cosmology, what the universe looks like, is extremely important. Maybe one of the most important things about yourself that uh, you might not even know. You see, when your cosmology is wrong, what the created universe looks like, the process and procedures of its origins, when your cosmology is wrong, everything else falls apart. Somebody say cosmology. It's just the study of the universe, the cosmos. For the past 400 to 500 years, y'all, we've been relying on a fallen world system that has repeatedly lied to us to teach us cosmology. A fallen world system 
that has repeatedly lied to us to teach us cosmology. We go to that system that repeatedly lied to us and we tell that system, teach us what the universe looked like. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? All right. Not only does that wicked, evil, present fallen world system teach us cosmology, it in a lot of cases holds the exclusive rights to do so. Meaning that that system doesn't allow anybody else to teach us what the universe, what creation looks like. And if you try to step in and try to teach creation or cosmology, amen, hallelujah, they will quickly boot you out. It's a fallen world system that tries to teach us what God's creation looks like when that system rejects God and everything about him. Are you with me here tonight? This wrong system has taught us evolution. The lie that we all come from slime. Fish and monkeys. All right. That's the same system that we go to and say, teach us what the universe looked like. That same system has taught us the Big Bang Theory. Y'all familiar with that? That there was an explosion long time ago. That when it went bang, everything just fell into place. The mountains, the trees, the rivers. On a molecular level, the DNA strands. Huh? Cell walls, protons, neutrons, electrons, everything just fell into place after an explosion. You see, to believe that, amen, would be to believe that an explosion happened at the daily advertising. And after the explosion, a full Sunday paper came out with pictures and letters all in the places where they need to be. That's how foolish that is. That after an explosion, a random explosion, Things fall where they're supposed to be. That's the system, y'all, that we rely upon. That's the system we run to and we say, teach our children what the universe looked like. Teach us what the universe looked like. That's the system. A system that not only taught us evolution, not only taught us the Big Bang Theory, a system that teaches us currently that the Hebrews, the ones who were in Egypt, in the Middle Eastern, Eastern African desert, building, building pyramids, that they look like Europeans, y'all. That system teaches us that. When common sense tells us otherwise. When that group of people, nothing wrong with them, can't take Louisiana heat. That you're going to be the people of the book? In bondage and slavery in Africa? That system teaches us that. And it's the same system that teaches us that our Messiah Jesus, born a Hebrew, had blonde hair and blue eyes. When nobody that with those characteristics was in that area during the biblical time. That's the system we run to, Brandon, and say, teach us what the universe looked like. And don't just teach us, teach our children. That system is who we trust to shape our cosmology. I'm here to tell you tonight that just like they lied about evolution, the Big Bang Theory, just like they lied about who are the original people of the book, just like they lied about the image of Jesus, all right? Currently, they are lying about what the universe looks like. Their whole cosmological system that they teach us through schooling, movies, billboards, logos, t-shirts, everywhere we turn our eyes, we see it, and I'm here to tell you that it's all a lie. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. They ask one scientist, they say, we know that you lied to us. He said, no, 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 no. We just didn't lie to y'all here and there. He said, everything we told y'all was a lie. As the Hebrews, amen, whether by bloodline tonight or by being engrafted into the root, of the Hebrew people. 
we are calling the church believers and the original Hebrews back to Hebrew cosmology tonight. Are you with me here, sister? All right. What you need to understand is that the Hebrews had cosmology. They had a concept of what the universe looked like. They had a concept of what the world and God's creation looked like. Listen, 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 y'all. We knew what it looked like, y'all. All right? But today and tonight, we have adopted another world view of what creation looks like. And Miss Shirley, I'm here to call us back. Come on, give God some glory. Amen? All right? All right, let's come back to our Hebraic cosmological system of what creation looks like. All right? Now, I know that's some big words, but I'm going to explain everything I talk about. But I'm not going to step it down for you. I'm going to call you up. I'm not, I'm, you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to explain everything, but I want you to come up with me. And since God is in this dispensation giving us both skill and what else? And understanding, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. All right? All right? Look at your neighbor and say, come up with me now. Look at your other neighbor and say, well, let's go up. What are we talking about tonight, y'all? Start with a C. Cosmology. That's what we're talking about tonight. Won't come to church and learn something. All right. The Hebrews had a biblical way of looking at creation that was consistent with the word of God. What they believed about our universe was exactly what the Bible taught. Nothing added, nothing taken away. All right. I want to tell you that the Hebrews never believed that the world was a globe. That it was a ball. A spear that it was round. You see? The Hebrews never believed that. Amen? Give me one of them good chest passes, then. All right. Praise us. The Hebrews never believed that, y'all. They never looked at our world and said, This is earth. They never did that. All right? I'm going to call you back tonight. What you believe in, and we're going to go through a series as a Roman invention. It's an invention of a people, amen, far from God, but you the people close to God. <laughs> so you got to understand what it looked like. All right? We never believed it was a ball, ever. And not only us, when you go back to ancient advanced civilizations, civilizations so advanced, amen, some of their architecture, some of their buildings are still wonders of the world today, Miss Katina. I'm talking about Egypt with the pyramids, amen, built in such a fashion they can't figure it out. And not only built on earth with a great, amen, uh, awesome amount of intelligence, but built in line with the astronomical stars and everything else. How did Egyptians could be so advanced? Well, how did they see the world? How did they view cosmology? Guess what? They didn't view it as a ball either. Not the Egyptians. Not the Hebrews. Not the Babylonians. Not even the Ming Dynasty in China, which outdates a whole bunch of empires. None of them viewed our earth as a ball. This global, round, ball, spherical shape of a planet is a very young theory. You think it's been around forever. You treat it like it's the only theory that's out there. When it is the youngest theory of the shape of our planet, only four to five hundred years old. Brought to being by a man called Nicholas Copernicus. We're going to talk about him next Tuesday. Listen to me good right here. Listen to me good. Up until the 1500s, I'm talking about B.C. and A.D., up until the 1500s, most modern advanced civilizations did not think the earth looked like this. Forgive me if I sound a little crazy. We the only fools that adopted this.
the Hebrews have always believed that the world was three things we're going to cover tonight. The world was fixed, flat, and there was a firmament that surrounded it. Anybody hear me up in here? Fixed, flat, and a firmament that surrounded G. All right? I might need that again, G. All right? Now, the title of tonight's message is this. Hebrew cosmology. The earth is not a globe. Are you with me here so far? You got that up there, Brick? Put that up there. Hebrew cosmology. The earth is not a globe. All right? Now, me and Malvo have been talking about this for a long time. How long you been wanting me to teach that, Malvo? Hallelujah. All right? We need to get back to our Hebraic concept of the universe, all right? But in this message, amen, we're going to look at what the Bible says about God's creation, about what the Bible says about the heavens and the earth. And then we will compare what the Bible says to what man says, to what scripture says, and to what science says. Oh, I said the S word. Ooh, science. Huh? As though science is God. Using the philosophies of men called science falsely named. 1 Timothy 6.20. You see? But in this message, listen, I'm going to take my time and where I stop, I just stop. All right? So the intro is, is going to be long. So we're just going to just talk. A few things I want you to focus on tonight. Number one, don't be a fool. While I'm talking to you tonight, don't be a fool. All right? Pastor, what you mean? Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 13, he that answered a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. So before you hear the Hebrew concept of the worldview, if you already have an opinion before you hear the scriptures, before you hear the evidence, before you hear what the Hebrews believe, if you already have an opinion and you're saying, listen, I'm going to go with what they've already taught me, the Bible calling you a fool, fool tonight. Because you've answered a matter without hearing the whole case. All right? So let's not be a fool. Don't be a fool tonight. Okay? Second thing I want you to do, amen, hallelujah, is number two, trust God. Somebody say, trust God. trust God. Okay. Isaiah 30 and 1 says, woe to the rebellious children, say the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. You're quick to listen to everybody else except God. Somebody left a tambourine up there. All right. I'll use that in my sermon if I... <laughs> If I leave it up here. Amen. All right. So what was number two? Trust God. All right. The scriptures say, let God be true and let what? Every man be a what? A liar. It don't matter if the whole earth of men come and say something. If God say otherwise, who we going with, y'all? That's it. You either believe or not. All right. Number three, I want you to think about consistently, John. Over and over again during this sermon and during these series, what is your experience? What is your experience? Have you personally experienced around earth? Have you seen the drop off? <laughs> the curvature? Have you experienced around earth? I'm asking you now. I'm asking you. All right. When you're up in a plane flying somewhere, amen, how does it look to you? Hey, have you experienced around earth? I'm just asking you. So during this message, I want you to focus on what you've experienced. Because what's going on is you're experiencing one thing, but they're telling you another. And you trust in them so much, you, what, what they say outweighs what you see with your own eyes. All right? And a lot of people say, man, I, I just can't believe that God made it all. I just can't believe, amen, that that is not round. Listen to me, man. Listen to me. 
It takes more faith to believe in a round earth than, than any other kind of earth. Anybody hear me up in here? Because you are going against your very eyes and your very experience. Okay? And we're going to talk about it, y'all. We're going to get into common sense and, and into another. We're going to talk about engineering. We're going to talk about aviation. Because in all of those things, no curvature is ever taken into consideration. When they build bridges and fly planes, they never put into the computer, never fly, uh, put into the coordinates. Oh, we better take into consideration the earth will drop off and curve at this moment. It's never considered. Why? Because it's not real. We're going to talk about it, all right? We're going to talk about it, okay? We're here to open some eyes tonight. All right. We here to wake our people up. We here to bring us back to what we once was. Amen. All right. The Bible says in Psalm 118, 8, it is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence where? In man. Because that's what we've been doing, y'all. Because I'm going to show you, God has spoken to us one thing, TP. But we believe an entire separate thing altogether. Number four, I want you to consider Kelly. Watch me now. Watch me, minister. Watch me. This is number four, what I want you to consider as we go through this series. Have they lied to you before? That's what I want you to consider. All right. If somebody has been truthful to you the whole time, never told you a lie, never said something that was inconsistent with God's truth, then trust everything they say. But if on the other hand, they have lied before, all right? Now watch this, Crystal. We can open up, amen, the food industry. Have they lied before? We can open up the medicine industry. Have they lied before? We can open up the hood of the school. Have they lied before? We can open up government tonight. Have they lied before? We can open up the Bible tonight. Oh God, religion tonight. Have they lied before? That's what I want you to be thinking about. All right? All right? All right? As we think about that, we're going to bring ourselves back as Hebrews. To the way we originally saw the world, the way we originally saw, amen, creation. All right? Now, amen, I want to tell you, amen, that some of you in here will say, well, what's the meaning? What's the purpose? What's the big deal? I'm so glad you asked that question tonight. Because a lot of the things, amen, when we study and when we get into, listen, I'm not coming up here just to talk about something, to be novel. To be new. That's not the type of preacher I am. Amen. When we was discussing with teachers and leaders. Amen. And even my wife about bringing this. I'm telling you. I sat on this three years. You got to understand. All right. Because if something is new. And it don't edify the body. I'm not interested to stand up here. And try to look deep to nobody. That's not why I'm here. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. And if you are teaching, you want to bring this or bring something new. Amen. Listen, you still in pride. You're still in arrogance. You're still in, in trying to uh, uh, showboat in front of people. That's not why we're here tonight. That's not why we're here tonight. I'm here tonight. Amen. Because you need to know that your cosmological view. How you see God's creation. All right. Or either make you or break you tonight. All right. I'm here bringing it to you because I see a systemic problem in mankind that God through discernment has allowed me to trace that all the problems that we see back to a root cause, oh God, back to a root cause that they have messed up in the way they view creation. Are you with me here right here, sir? It's the only reason why I'm talking about it. It's the only reason why I'm talking about it. Not to be novel. Not for no applause. You see, from this round earth, this heliocentric. Pastor, what's heliocentric? Huh? A sun-centered galaxy, a sun-centered solar system. Heliocentric. Say that with me. Heliocentric. Helio, sun. Centric, center. Solar system. 
from around Earth and a sun-centered solar system have sprung forth every single major lie in science that the church is dying of today. Are you with me here? And what the church has done, pastors and leaders, they've tried to fight off the lies without killing it at the root. Yes. Yes. The root of evolution is Copernican, C Copernicus theory. The root of the Big Bang, amen, is Copernicus global round uh, 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 spherical earth. That's the root of it all, y'all. Oh, God. I, come on, somebody. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. It's the root of it, y'all. Churches, listen. Kill the root and stop the fruit. Pastor, what you mean? I'm telling you, you deal with this round globe theory, there could be no Big Bang. There's no Big Bang, there's no evolution. There's no evolution, there's no natural selection. There's no natural selection, amen, there's no law of the jungle. There's no law of the jungle, hey, God, all kind of wickedness and immorality goes out the window because we're not animals, but we're creations of the Most High God. Oh, God have mercy on what does this thing do to us? This globe, this round earth, this heliocentric system. It gives us a, a far off concept of God. A far off concept of God. All right? You done seen the pictures of the solar system, y'all? And the Milky Way galaxy. Put them up there for me, sound booth. Amen. You done seen all that. That's how they show us that. All right? And look, I believe that all, all right? Went to college, took classes and all that stuff, all right? Even taught in here some of the tenets of, amen, their system. But I was asleep, and I'm woke now. Yeah. Woo! Woo! You have anything else? Or that's it on the, you got the Milky Way on that too, son, or that's the, Oh, yeah, that's how they teach us that. Okay, okay, watch this. When they teach us that, they put so many big numbers, Mr. Neves. The earth is such and such million miles away. It's spinning at this rate. I'm going to share with you all that in a second. And what happens to normal people when they, when, when they deal in big numbers, what happens to their brain? Their brain just, they go off. Well, oh, that's too many numbers, the one. That's way too many numbers. But they play us like that. They play us like that. Right. You see, when you think creation looks like this, where is God in all of that? Where is he? He must be millions of miles away as well. Light years. Eons. You see, this model teaches us and our children that we don't have a close God. We have a far God. And what the devil has done with this concept, amen, we don't think that God is really close enough to see what we got going on. See, as my contention is, is that if the church got back to the Hebrew cosmology, you would understand that God is not as far as you think. If you knew how close God was, you would have never went where you went last night. You never would have did what you did today. You see what that model do to us? Pastor, how close is God? Isaiah 40, 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circles of the earth. God ain't past no Milky Way galaxy. God ain't out there eons and eons away. Oh no, my friend. The Bible say he sit right on top of the earth. And I'm going to show you that in a second. And the Bible say he sits so close, hallelujah, that he could see us. That the inhabitants of the earth are what? Like grasshoppers unto him. He watching us all move around, doing our thing. He read that. I'm going to tell you that he's so close. Ooh, God have mercy. He's so close, y'all. 
that in the end of days, mm, when he rolled back the heavens like a scroll, and when he rolled back the heavens like a scroll, we're going to see that his throne was always right there above us. That's why the Bible says every eye going to see him. He's right there. He's right there. This global round model make you think he's far away. Oh, no, Kip. He right at. You know, man, hallelujah, they got something called mirror tent. And sometimes them ball put that mirror tent on their car. They put that dog dog tent on their car. And you can't tell anybody in the car. Sound boot, help me out. Walk with me. You can't tell nobody in the car. And so you clowning, and cutting up, taking pictures of the car. And hallelujah, right there in that, the wind that rolled on. And you, woo, somebody was in that. God got a mirror tent on creation. That's like in the interrogation room. Boy, I done stole something. Huh? Everybody, all the witnesses, everybody know he stole something. The DA in there, the cop in there, everybody. And they asked him all kind of questions. Huh? He's spilling all his beans. And the witness is right at. Right at. On the other side of the window. On the other side of the glass. Tonight, listen. God ain't full. He's just on the other side of the glass. Woo! Woo! Are you hearing me up in here? Hebrews, listen, get back. Get back. You see, listen, I'm going to tell you something else that it does. It's not even in my notes, but amen. Sometimes on the way here, the Lord will improve on your message. Not only does it give us a, a far concept of God, but just add this in your notes or, or, or put it in your mind, amen, or take a picture of it. Well, there can't be no picture, but, but, but watch this now. Watch this. It sows doubt about God. It sows doubt about God. All right? Pastor, what you mean by that? You see, the first attack that the devil laid against Eve was, has God said? He wanted to get Eve questioning the veracity of the Lord's word, the surety of it, the dependability of it. All right? Can God be trusted? Is all of his promises really a yes and amen? You see, what the devil did with this heliocentric globe ball universe, what he's done is God says it looks one way. He says it looks like another. And what he's doing is the same thing he did with Eve. Hath God said and what we're going to do, we're going to bring you through the Renaissance. We're going to bring you through the Age of Enlightenment. We're going to bring you through Newton. We're going to bring you through Kepler. We're going to bring you through all history, amen, as it relates to after the Copernican theory came out. We're going to bring you through all of that. And I'm going to show you how humanity changed. When the devil attacked the very foundation of our belief, he attacked Genesis on how creation looks. Something happened to mankind. What happened to mankind? Well, if God is lying about this, if God can't be trusted about this, if the earth is not what God says it is, then what else did God say in his word that we can't depend on? And from that, people began to do, every man did what was right in his own eyes. It's, it's a globe. It's a big bang. It's, it's evolution. It's, it's a man could be a woman if he wanted. A woman could be a man. Why, 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 why trust anything God says? Hath God said? Hath God said? The devil knew what he was doing. Can we deal him with an angelic brilliance, dog? This is not the plot of a man here, no. When he changed the shape of creation, listen to me now, he did something to the hearts of men. You see, because if you can't believe how God say his creation look, what can you really believe? You see, something happened to me when I came to the revelation of how creation looked. It strengthened me in so many areas of my walk. When I prayed, amen, I didn't have to feel my prayers was going so far. Oh, God. 
Are you with me here so far? You see, and when God sees you believe him on this basic level, I'm going to show you why it's basic, because nobody was there when he created. I'm going to show you that in a second. They trying to tell you how it looked, but nobody was there. He told Joe, where was you? Oh, God, have mercy. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to contain myself. When you believe him on this basic level, he going to take you to places you ain't never been. Woo! <laughs> Come on, let's get back. Let's get back. Let's get back. Somebody say faith. faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil was so in doubt, though. All right, now let me give you a B. I guess that was A and a half. Let me give you a B. All right. Through this global theory, we have not only uh, uh, conceptualized God as being distant and far, which perpetuates wickedness and iniquity upon the earth. All right. We not only, amen, have this concept of, well, if he can't be trusted in these uh, Genesis things, can he be trusted in Revelation? And throughout the whole book? Right. You know, did a well really swallow Jonah? Did a big fish really swallow Jonah? Did Jesus really walk on water? This is why the church don't believe no more, man. Especially the European church. This is why they don't believe no more. Because the church is in bed with the enemy. They come in with, with, with globes on the back of their churches. They come in talking about the solar system. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I, come on, Pastor, get to B. It gives us an insignificant concept of man. The global heliocentric universe gives us an insignificant concept of man man becomes less important prophet he really does well how could he be important easily it's so big millions of planets millions of suns they, they just tack on big numbers it just everything is a million in space they got a million volkswagens out there a million everything is a million or a billion. So brother Carl, when we adopt this model of our universe, who are we? Who are we? We on this tiny little planet, according to their model, called Earth, which is one of the smallest in our solar system, traveling around, amen, the sun at 65,000 miles per hour. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to that in a second. All right, which our sun is one of the smallest stars in this universe when there are millions and billions of them with solar systems just like it. Who are we? Look how insignificant. Does God really care? Does God really see me? Does my life really matter? Is there any purpose? And what has happened with this insignificant concept of man brought about by the vain philosophies of men is that we don't care about ourselves and we don't care about one another no more. What I see in this is murder. If we come from slime, we come from monkeys, then shooting another brother ain't nothing but killing another monkey. He says there's a thousand, a million, billion other earths out there with, which they want you to believe other life forms. Amen. Does it really matter? When a tree falls in the forest, does anybody hear it? So we see a generation that's a murderous generation. Don't care about abortion. Kill their babies. It ain't nothing. It's just, it's, it's nothing. Not only kill their babies, walk on the job and shoot up a bunch of people, mass murders. They won't talk about where is this coming from. It's the guns. Nine eight of guns is what you're teaching people. Anybody hear me up in here? It's the cosmology. Guns always been that. Guns always been that. But with a different cosmology, life matters. Are you with me here so far? Is this too deep for you? Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to what the Hebrews believe. Listen, that's why they're killing everybody. 
And they're not only going to kill everybody. When they're done killing, what they going to do? Pow! Kill themselves. Life don't matter. The root of that is your view of God, your view of the universe, your view of his creation. But I want to tell you, amen, that the Bible considers us very significant. Not only is this model wrong, but, but the principle that comes out of the model is wrong. God loves you. Amen. The Bible says he knows the very hairs on your head. Anybody hear me up in here? He know your name. Hey, God, while you was yet in the womb, he called you, ordained you to be what you be. Listen, man, God knows you. But this is what they teach us, and this is what they teach you now with children. And it's, look, they wonder why they're acting like, acting out the way they do. They view themselves as another cog in the wheel. Hopeless, worthless, lonely, no purpose, insignificant. It leads to widespread violence and murder in our society. This evolutionary heliocentric view, amen, leads to abortion, suicide, which is on the rise, amen, especially amongst Caucasians, amen. And this murder, amen, uh, which is on the rise in our people group, amen, shooting each other, gang violence. Anybody hear me up in here? You change their view and their model of creation, all right, and God will use that. As David's stone to slay Goliath in our earth. All right? All right? All right? Yeah, I have here. The reality is, is that earth is not a globe. The sun is not the center. And mankind is not just a little speck speeding through the cosmos. Mankind is the crown of God's creation. He built everything around us, not we around everything else. That's why some people care more about animals than they do humans. The cosmological view is messed up. All right? I said heliocentric is sun-centered. Geocentric is earth-centered. It's when the earth is the center of it all. When you put a geocentric universe, amen, man becomes more significant because you see that God Built everything, amen, for him. Are you with me here so far? All right, all right. Now, okay, okay, okay. Let's get into it now. What you mean, Pastor? Yeah, that was just the introduction. <laughs> We're going to stop when time runs out. But this is big, y'all. This is big. This is, this is what the devil is using to test society up. When the Bible say in the last days, amen, that, that strong delusion would come over the people, that they would believe a lie, this is part of the package. And let me tell you, this is the hallmark. This is the keynote part of the package right here. We're dealing with the biggest deception of the enemy, even bigger than us being the Hebrews. This is the biggest deception of the Oh, God, I'm telling you what I'm telling you here tonight. Because after this thing came out, they put a globe in every classroom. I'm going to stop right I'm going to stop. I don't want to give y'all too much. I don't want to give y'all too much. All right? Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. Look at your neighbor and say, open your eyes. Listen, if you're just about you tonight, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and then you're going to die, if you're just about you tonight, this ain't for you, all right? This ain't for you. Just, just wait till... Two weeks from now to come to church. But if you're concerned with mankind, if you're concerned with magnifying God, if you're concerned with the devil taking what God did and taking the credit for what God did, if you're concerned for his majesty, then come on, give God a shout of glory tonight. Come on, praise him tonight. All right? All right? All right? You think I want to bring this? You think the enemy ain't going to be mad at me for bringing this? This is the Cadillac of, of, of his system, though. 
This is the delusion right here. Let's go to the Bible now. First point. The earth is fixed. Somebody say fixed. fixed. It's fixed. That's what the Bible says. Now science tells us that the earth is spinning at 1,000 miles per hour. Spinning. How fast? Y'all feel anything? I'm just asking you. The earth is spinning at, this is what they told us, and this is what we believe. How many people believe that when they told us that? Come on, don't be shy now. Now, how many people really thinking about that say that don't make no sense? Don't make no sense. Don't make a hill of beans of sense. Listen to me, man. Listen to me. We went to a little fair one time in Florida. And at least was young, bro. And so she wanted to ride with Grace. And she went on that tilt the world. Ooh, goodness. Oh, that's, that's, that's prophetic. The tilt the world. Because this thing is not only spending a thousand miles, it's got a little tilt to it. Got a little tilt in the accent. Why don't people some clowns, man? <laughs> come on, Hebrews. Come back with me. Come back with me. Glee. Stop doing the, what the strangers do. Come back to your God. Come back to your God tonight. Come back the way he sees creation. Ain't done no good, no good for you anyway. So back to Annalise in the Tilted World. She was young. Huh, pretty? I don't think she even remember, but she wanted to go with Grace, boy. Boy, that thing started tilting, boy. Start spinning around and around. And she was having fun. You remember how fun she was having, man? She was having a blast. But that thing kept spinning. And she was just kept smiling. And all of a sudden we saw, yeah. <laughs> we laugh like that. We laugh so much. All right? Pastor, what's the moral of the story? Listen, when you want something that's spinning, <laughs> you gonna get dizzy. Listen, you remember them little rides at the playground, John? What they used to turn around? I don't know why we go on there. Oh yeah, we're fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah, get your headache. So how this thing could be spinning a thousand miles per hour, and we don't feel it? Well, it's not only spinning. Watch this, because while it's spinning a thousand miles an hour, they tell us. That is orbiting the sun at 65,000 miles per hour. So we're going 1,000 miles in a circle like that. And then 65,000 miles around the sun. Yeah! Yeah! Now wait, I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Can you feel it? Now how much faith does that take to believe? I can't see it, I can't feel it, but I still. Have they lied to you before? Yes. <sighs> you ever went 100 miles per hour on a car? <laughs> of what I'm saying, Kelly. You have went 100 miles per hour in the car. Can you feel that you're going 100 miles per hour? So that's what science says. Pretty ridiculous. What does the Bible say? Because this is where the rubber meets the room. Whether you think that is ludicrous or not, and you trust in these men. These strangers, because that's what they are. You trust in them. Look, you could trust in them. Neil deGrasse, you could trust in all of them. You could trust in all of them. You could shine their shoes, kiss their feet. You could trust in them. But what happens when I tell you that God says the exact opposite? This is what they say. 
But this is what God says. First Chronicles 16.30. Fear before him, all the earth. The world also shall be stable that it be not moved. It don't move, though. It's fixed. Come on, Mr. Smarty Pants. What you got to say now? Is it going a thousand miles? Is it circling the sun 65,000 miles? Come on, man. Because if it is and you believe that, just get up and get out of here, man. Because you don't believe God, though. You don't believe God. Okay? Let's go look. Psalm 9610. Say among the heathen, because that's who's giving it to us, that the Lord reigneth. He reigns. The world also shall be what? Established that it shall not what? Be moved. Is it going a thousand miles? Psalm 93, 1. The Lord reigned. His, he's clothed in majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he had girded himself. The world is established three times that it cannot be moved. What are you spinning to tonight? Who told you that? Who lied to you? And what good has this information done you? Hebrews, come home. Come home to God. Come home to the Bible. Come home to creation. They lied to us, y'all. They say that the earth is, they say that the sun is fixed and the earth is orbiting. But you got to understand the Luciferians. You got to understand the Satanists. You got to understand the secret societies. They say that up is down and down is up. Everything is backwards. That's why they even write their names backwards sometimes. That's why they put that cross upside down. So when they say the sun is still and the earth is going around the sun, that's a good indication that everything is the opposite of what they're saying. The earth is not moving. The earth is fixed. The sun is not still. The sun is moving. Are you with me here so far? Pastor, this is blowing my mind. All of my sixth grade education is out the window. Welcome to Philadelphia Christian Church. Well, we will go over the miseducation of the Negro and the heathen and the Gentile and the Greek. Okay, 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 okay. I'm still a little hyped from Atlanta. Come on. What does the Bible say about the sun? Is the sun still or does it move? Psalm 19, 4. And the Bible says the heavens declare his glory. It says their line is going out throughout the, all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. Remember that the world has an end. We're going to come back to that. In them had he set a what? A tabernacle for the sun. What's a tabernacle? A tent. So the tent got something that is under? I mean the sun got something that is under? Oh yeah. The sun has a, a tent. A tabernacle. The sun is under something. Alright? Does the sun move? Past the verse 5. Which is a bridegroom, watch these words, coming out of his chamber. In the morning the sun is like a man just waking up, coming out of his room. Good morning. <laughs> Come on, say that with me. Good morning. That's what the sun doing, baby. And he rejoiced it as a strong man. Hallelujah. That's about to run a race. That's the sun coming out. He's about to get getting ready. He getting, in, getting in the block. In the morning. Sun is going on the move. Hallelujah. Where is he going? Verse 6. His going forth is from the end of the heaven. And his circuit, his path, his journey, where does, it, where does it go? Unto the other end of it. From one end of heaven to the other is his circuit, is his journey. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The Bible says that the sun has a circuit. The sun moves. The sun, hallelujah, hallelujah, comes out. The sun, like a strong man, to erase. Hey, God, the sun, hallelujah, moves. And the earth stays still. All right? The New Living Translation says, The sun rises at one in the heaven, 
and follows its course to the other end of heaven. Are you with me here so far? All right. All right. Watch this. So the Bible says that the sun doesn't move or stay still according to the Bible. It moves. But watch this. Let me show you something else. Look at Joshua. Joshua 10 and 12. They lied to us, Brother Carl. Then spake Joshua to the Lord. Oh, it's funny that the earth, the, the sun moved. You wild about that. But watch this. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And Joshua prayed, he said, in the sight of all Israel, Son, stand, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Angela. Joshua needed more daylight. So Joshua didn't tell the earth to stop. <clears throat> because it's already stopped. <laughs> Joshua in the spirit spoke to the, the, to, 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 the, to the heavenly body which was moving, which was the sun. Joshua said, son, stand still. If the sun was still, why would Joshua tell it to stand still? If I was talking to my pulpit and you came in here and you heard me say, pulpit, stay still. You say, that boy crazy. <laughs> Why? Because the pulpit is already still. Joshua, knowing that the sun and the Hebraic conception of cosmology, the sun is on the move. He said, I need more sunlight, Randy. He said, sun, stand still. Not only sun, stand still. Moon, hold what you got. Yeah, yeah. Hey, God have mercy. Oh, hold what you got in the valley of Agilon. You see? It's not the earth that revolves around them, friends. It's them that moves around the earth. Oh, God. Come on, give God some glory. I'm, I'm trying to tell you here. Oh, man. Listen, the devil tried to rob God of his glory. Huh? Take the miracle power. Listen, the sun stood still because Israel prayed, because Joshua prayed for Israel. You see? You see how much that made God a big God? You think that's a big miracle? I got another one for you. Isaiah 38 in verse 8. Hezekiah is sick. And God said, Hezekiah, I'm going to give you 15 more years. Anybody hear me? Up here? God said, Hezekiah, I mean, Hezekiah said, God, how am I know? God said, what you want for a sign? You want the sun now to go forward or go backwards? As a guy said, oh, God, that ain't too big for you to move the sun sundown forward. Why don't you make the sundown go backwards? Understand, Philly, in order to make the sundown go backwards, you got to put the sun in. You got to put the sun in reverse. God told Hezekiah, behold, I will bring again the shadow of the sundown of the degrees which has gone down in the sundown. Of Ahaz, I'm going to bring it back 10 degrees backwards. Watch this. So the sun, which moves forward, which we saw God stop. God said, don't just think I could stop it. The sun returned 10 degrees. The sun backed up, y'all. Mm. By which degrees it was going down. Listen, the earth is fixed. But the sun, the moon, and for that matter, the stars, the heavens, they move around a fixed earth. Are you with me here so far? Brent, you got that picture? You got that picture, Brent? Amen. If you ever been, hallelujah, uh, observing, amen. Not that one, Brent. Oh, you stole my thunder. If, if you, if you, there's a picture I email you separately. It's got, it's got star paths. Amen. Where they speed up a picture and show the stars moving around. It's such a beautiful shot. Amen. Listen to me, we're we going to get deep into it. I'm going to show you how, amen, how the earth is stationary, hallelujah, in relation to the positions of the stars, amen. You see that? You see that? See that? All them constellations, along with the moon and everything else, they, they go around the earth, amen. And their position and their distances and how they are, amen, every month and every season, it's utterly impossible for the earth to be going around the sun and they be in the exact relationship to the earth all the time like that. It's an impossibility. I know that's too deep, but I just want you to know it. All right? All right? The sun is on the move. The earth is still. All right? You know the book of Enoch? 
Somebody say Enoch. Enoch. All right. They never put it in the Bible. I understand that. It's a good historical book, but I believe that the book of Enoch was kept out of our scriptures and kept away from the church for a good reason. The book of Enoch, amen, is very, very specific of the work of fallen angels in, hallelujah, the earth realm. The devil don't want you to know what he's up to. Secondly, there is no other book like the book of Enoch that describes creation. Enoch describes creation in more detail than Genesis, describes it in more detail, amen, than Ezekiel, amen. And guess what in the book of Enoch, Enoch says about the earth, it's not a globe, what he says about all of these things, he confirms it. Look, 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 watch in Enoch 45.5, watch this, I got to keep moving. The Bible says, and I saw the chambers of the sun, the chambers of the sun, what you mean? The sun got room, the sun got a room, the sun goes somewhere at night. The chambers of the sun, Enoch said that, where they go out and where they return. And their glory is returning, how one is more honored than the other is. And their magnificent course, there's a course for the sun and the moon. And how they do not leave their course, neither adding nor subtracting from their course, how they keep faith in one another, observing their earth, their oath. They keep God's word that he spoke upon them. They don't change unless he tell them to change. Verse 6, and the sun is not still, it goes out first and completes its journey as the command of the Lord of spirits and his name endures forever and ever. In verse 7, and after this is the hidden invisible path of what? Of the moon. The moon is moving though. And it travels the course of its journey in that place by day and by night. Because sometimes you see the moon in the daytime. Anybody with me up in here? All right. All right. So I got to keep moving. I can't go through everything, but I'm a, but but I'm, we're going to do a little series. Oh, it's going to. Oh, God, it's going to bless your walk. If you think that that, you knowing the people bless your walk, watch what this do to your walk. Watch what it do to your faith. Watch what it do to your prayer life. And you're going to begin to discern the truthfulness of it. By the fruit it produces in your life. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. <laughs> Secondly, listen, the Bible, Hallelujah, not only says that the world is fixed, it is also flat. Somebody say flat. flat. Yes. The earth is flat. Like this stage. It's not a globe. It's not a ball. I don't care what they told you. And I don't care who said it. I'm only here with thus said the Lord. I'm only here to say what thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, no, G. No, you can't do like Uncle Cordell. All right, come on, come on. Let's see. Oh, you did it, prayer. Come on, give God some glory for that. You did it, prayer. I thought you was going to hit me in the head with it or something. There it is flat. It's not a ball, y'all. They tell us it's a ball. But watch this. All right? Isaiah 11 and 12. Now, now, when they tell us it's a ball, you, you could tell us a lie because they inundate us with images of it. Everywhere you go is on cartoons, is on movies, is Star Trek, is, is Star Wars. It's just, it's just way too much. All right? But there's an old saying. You tell a lie often enough and it's going to be accepted as true. And this is how this has happened. Listen, on the next time, I'm going to tell you what the early church, people like Martin Luther and John Calvin, when this theory came out, I'm going to tell you what they said about this. All right? All right? All right? Isaiah eleven twelve, And he shall set up an ensign, that's the cross, for the nations. And he shall assemble who? The outcasts of Israel through this ensign. He's going he to bring us back to himself. The outcasts of Israel, the lost ten tribes, and gather together the dispersed of Judah. That's us. Through the cross, the ensign, he's going to revive us, y'all. And he's going to draw us from where? From the four corners of the earth. Does this ball have co corners? Bring it. Show me the corner in this ball. Is there a corner on this ball? How does a spear have a corner? It doesn't, though. It doesn't. 
It doesn't. <laughs> Your motto goes against scripture, man. And you're stubbornly staying in it. When God telling you different. And what good has it done you? All right? Not only that, Isaiah 48, 13. Watch this. My hand had also laid the foundation of the earth. Where's the foundation of this ball? Does a spear have a foundation? Does a ball have a foundation? What does a ball have? A core. It don't have a foundation. It has a core. All right? Now, they teach us in school, oh, this is ridiculous, <laughs> that the earth got a little thin crust, like pizza, a little thin crust. Then you go down and it's all hot in there. It's all hot in there. It's all hot. Now, theologically speaking, where's the bottomless pit in the round earth? Where is that? Oh, but I can show you a bottomless pit in the in the flat earth. The core. Well, Pastor, the core is really, really deep. Oh, it's great for apples. But the Bible never teaches us a core. He tells Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? See, a foundation is something that's under a house, something that's under flat. Not a ball. They lied to you. They lied to all of us. They took God from us. I'm going to show you what the philosophers said. The philosophers, amen, that were cool with Voltaire, amen, and Nietzsche, amen. They said, we killed God. They asked him, how did y'all kill God? <laughs> when we made the earth round. Took him straight out of, straight out of creation. I'm going to show you all that. Where's the corners? Where's the foundation? Huh? Daniel 4, 11. Look what it says. And the tree grew and was strong and the height reached unto the heaven and its sight was to the end of all the earth. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Peyton, Peyton, point to me the end of this ball. What is the end? Pastor, don't do me that. It's a trick question. Yes, it is. See, a spirit can't have an end. But the Bible said that the earth, the ends of the earth. Huh? A ball can't have an end, but something flat could. And there are ends of the earth. Y'all still up under? The Bible don't say it's round, y'all. All right? I'm going to tell you here, the Bible says this. Come on, I'm going to give you a couple more, and then we're going to just kind of continue, and we're going to be done. Well, Pastor, that was a lot you just said. I know, but wait. <laughs> Isaiah 61, 66.1. Thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. <laughs> Anybody got some spherical footstools at the house? <laughs> no, but you got a footstool like that. I feel y'all thinking up in here. I feel some gears moving up in here. And listen, you might not sleep tonight. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, this is why we come to church. You understand what I'm saying? We want God to keep us up all night long. Just don't keep us in lies and foolishness. All right. I'm telling you, man. Okay. All right. All right. Now, now, now watch me bust your head. Watch me bust your head. Bust your head. Watch me bust your head. <laughs> they know it. The powers that be know that the earth don't look like this. I want to show you a map of what the flat earth looks like. 
Okay, Brent, I'm all over the place. If you could pull this up, that'd be great. One of those maps that I showed you, amen, and then we're going to come back to that, amen. Just want to show you a little map of what it looks like, all right, the real map of the earth, all right. See if you can get that, Brent, all right. Well, that's good enough. I'll take that. That's what the flat earth looked like on the right. You know what's that on the left? That's the United Nations flag. What's the best place to hide truth? In plain sight. Pastor, you serious? Oh, yeah. The devil is really ridiculing us. He's playing us. He's saying, even though your eyes and your own senses tell you it's flat, I can tell you it's round, and you're going to believe me that it's round before your God, and I'm going to show you the evidence that it's not round, and you're going to still believe what I say. You think that's the only flag that's like that? Oh, no. Come on, flip, flip, flip me another, another slide. There's, there's a bunch of them. Maps of the flat earth. Not only that, Romello, when we're watching TV, if you look close in some movies, on the walls, in the houses of the movies in Hollywood, guess what kind of map they got on the wall? Flat earth. The Journey to the Middle of the Earth, 2008. They had a flat earth in that. Catwoman, flat earth, picture in, her, in that movie. I got one going way back, DuckTales. Woo-hoo, all right? <laughs> Their logo, go check all this out. Their logo was a, was, a, was a map of the flat earth. Plain sight. Plain sight. The devil do that to just try to get under the skin of God, to rub it in his face. Your people, God, they don't want nothing to do with you. They don't want truth, God. And God looks down, he says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And they love it, so he says. You see? Yeah, that's the World Health Organization, Health, WHO, International Maritime Organization. Look, 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 let me end off with this. Let's talk about the firmament, all right? Let's talk about the firmament. You ain't going to sleep tonight anyway, so don't worry about it. We're going to just stay a little while. Let's talk about the firmament. All right. Babe, you won't catch this one? I'll give it to Gene. Oh, boy. Well, come on, get it, man. Thank you, man. That's my dude, boy. So let's talk about the firmament, y'all. Um, let's look at, at Genesis 1 and 6. All right. The Bible says, and God said, let there be a what? A firmament. In the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning was the second day. Pastor, what's the firmament? The firmament is a solid structure. A solid structure that God put over the earth. All right? You ever saw a snow globe? All right? Brent, show me a picture. I think I got a picture there. That's what it looks like. That's the firmament. All right? That's the firmament. It's a solid structure. In other places, God calls it a vault. Huh? Huh? It's, it's, it's a covering. Huh? We would call it a, a dome. All right. But there's some transparency to it. OK. All right. This thing right here, no matter what they tell you, no matter what lies they tell you, this thing is impervious. You can't get through it. You can't get through it. Well, Pastor, they say we went to the moon. And I'm going to get we talk about the moon. You can't get through this thing. Job 37, 18, talking about the firmament. Has thou with him spread out the sky, Job? Did you spread out the sky? But this is what this is more important. Have you spread out the sky, which is strong? How can the sky be strong? Solid structure. The sky is strong. Uh, what, is, what is it like? It's as a molten looking glass it's transparent but it's like a glass but it's like a glass you can't get through that 
All right? That's wild, huh? Why would the Bible talk about windows in heaven if it wasn't enclosed? Oh, I bust somebody here just now. All right? Oh, I got you. Look, because y'all yeah, just like, Pastor, that's too much. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everything I say, I can come with it yet. The firmament. If you look at the NIV, can you join him in spreading out the skies? How the skies are? They are hard as a mirror of bronze, he says. Don't get through that, though. People say, we going here, we going here. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Pastor, why is that the case? Watch now, Kip. You ready for some doctrine, Kip? Some systematic theology? The earth so serves a dual purpose. It's our temporary home, but there is somebody else who was cast down here. The earth is both our temporary home, but it is also Lucifer's prison. He was cast down to the earth, cast out of the heavens. He don't like the firmament. Never did like it. Don't like me talking about it right now. Are you with me here so far? He hates the firmament like a prisoner hates the bars he wake up seeing every morning. He want out. He want out to fulfill his original goal of exalting his throne amongst the sons and the stars of God. He want to be in the mountain of God. God said, Ball, please. Ball, please. You ain't getting up there. So he convinced men to help him in his jailbreak attempts. So we built Babel, a tower, to reach to the top of the heavens. If there was no firmament, what they building for? And why did God get offended by it? If you see, when your theology get right, your system can understand what the Bible was talking about. And he's still at it to this day. CERN, the Hadron Collider. He's looking for a way out. Trying to make holes and rifts into reality, into the system and chasms, into creation. He's looking for a way out. He wants to continue the fight that he lost when Michael toppled him out of heaven. One of them, one of them brothers that you beat up and he said, next time I see you. But he got a problem, y'all. And it starts with an F. The problem is the firmament. It's a prison for him. And we were put down here in the garden to have authority and dominion. So I would liken it to man would be the warden of the prison. Deputies and officers. But something happened at the fall. Mm. Well, we lost all authority. We lost all dominion. And the inmates began to run the prison instead of the war. And anybody hear me up in here? Hey, God. The firmament. Ain't going nowhere, dog. Ain't going nowhere. You see? What you need to know about the firmament, amen, is that God put the lights in the firmament. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me show you how they know. Romello, you with me again? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> Didn't work this time. Jalen, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Brent! Hook me up with that show, Brent. Them two shows that, listen, I'm going to show you they know about the firmament. Anybody saw the Truman Show? Pastor, you know I'm not old enough to know the Truman Show. Remember, actually, mom, what the Truman Show is about. It's about a man living in a dome. And everything he think is real is not real. He living under the dome. 
And somebody from the top controlling everything that he's doing. They're sending messages. And then lately they put out another CBI, I, don't know, I think it was CBS sitcom. Watch this. Under the dome. You think them people don't know what we under? Oh yeah, they know. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you about Operation Fishbowl when they was trying to shoot weapons at the thing. You can't. You're not getting out of here. The next time the firmament is removed will not be removed by men. <laughs> but the Most High gonna open up the top of the fish tank. Almost done, almost done, almost done. Almost done, almost done. Come on, y'all ain't going to bed anyway. <laughs> the firmament. At Genesis 1.14. Yes, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's just a little piece. And God said, let there be lights where? So, so wait, I thought that the sun was in space. Millions of miles away. I thought that the moon was thousands of miles away. But what does God say about the sun and the moon? Where are they? In space? No. They're in the what? In the firmament. In it. In it. They're in it. <laughs> Brent, I sent you some pictures. <laughs> Pastor, you sent me a lot of pictures. I need the one with the clouds and the sun. Oh, yo, oh, that's what it looked like? Brick, go back to the other one. You was right. Then we're going to get this one in a second. You see that? That's what it really looked like. That's what it really looked like. And so we got this sun, y'all, that they say is millions of miles away. Got us black, 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 black. Millions of miles away. <laughs> We're like, ooh, that sun must be hot. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Is that not foolery or what? Okay, but watch this. Watch this. Okay, so that's the way it really looks. Okay? Now, now Brent, give me, give me the other one. We, we're going to talk about this on one of our... You see, there's something in geometry they call the Pythagorean Theorem. When you know two sides of a triangle, you can calculate the other side. When you look at the rays of the sun, mm, God have mercy. And you judge it with the Pythagorean theorem, understanding triangles and geometry. There is no way that the sun could be millions of miles away. Shining on the whole earth and the whole solar system. And the rays coming out the clouds like this. <laughs> oh God, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Show me another one. Show me another one. Show me the other one. Okay, this is another one because sometimes you're going to look at the sun easily and it's going to look like clouds are behind it. The moon too. All right. It's in the firmament. Look at the next one. Come on, this is the one I want to get to. The sun is close. Look at this light. You see that? You see how, it, you see the triangle? You see that? If it was far, the, all the rays of the sun would be straight down. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to show it to you a good one day. Yeah, we just don't have enough time, but go study and check it out. It's, God have mercy. Oh, it's closer than you think. Oh, it's, that's why it's so hot. It's closer than you think. Yeah. All right. I'm almost done. The, the, the firmament, as it come down, it meets with the earth. There's a place on earth where it meets. That's, that's what we call the ends of the earth. Oh, God have mercy. When they couldn't find Enoch, God took him there. That's why the book of Enoch is so dangerous. Because he's describing what he saw when he went to the ends of the earth. Show me the little picture, the little slide from medieval times that they did. Amen. Yeah, yeah, that's one of them. Oh, God, I got so much to say, a little time to say it. All right. You know there's one continent they don't let us go to? You can't go over there, no. 
Jay, let's take a trip to Antarctica, man. We're going to take one of your old school cars. We're going to ride down there. <laughs> What's going to happen, Jay? We're not going to get far. When we talk about it empirically and practically, I'm going to give you examples of people who tried to go down there. Oh, yeah, Miss Tina. Oh, yeah, they lock you up. Give your F-16 escort back to wherever you came from. What they hiding down there? What they don't want us to see down there? The ends of the earth? Come on, flip, me. flip, flip another one, Brent. Come on, Brent. Oh, that's what they say it looked like. But the heavens and the earth meet. If we had time, I'd show you in the book of Enoch. But look, uh, uh, look up Enoch 33, 1 through 4. He talks about it. Amen. All right. One more, one more, one more. All right. The firmament has windows. We went over that. God said, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. You don't have room enough to receive. You not only need to know that the firmament has windows, amen, but there's water on top of the firmament. See, because God in creation, he says, he says, he says, I want to split the waters up. He said there's going to be waters beneath the firmament, but waters also above the firmament. Mm. They say, God, how in the world did you flood the earth and just fought it in? Oh, somebody got it. Somebody got it. You see, but in Genesis 7, amen, hallelujah, not only did he break up the waters that was in the deep. Oh, God, he opened up the windows and the water. Oh, God. I'm... Genesis 7, 11. Come on, Brent, 7, 11. Shop right, shop right. And the 600 year Noah. In the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. But not only that, the windows of heaven were open. There's water up there. Water up there. Water's above, the water's beneath. I'm going to end off with this. Guess what's seated at the top of the firmament? <laughs> guess, guess who's, guess who's seated at the, at the top of the Ezekiel one, Ezekiel one, twenty six, and above the what, the firmament, above the firmament, this is the third heaven we talking about here. See, the first heaven is where the birds are. Second heaven is where the stars and the celestial bodies and the angels are. Mm. But there's a heaven above the firmament. There's a heaven. And that heaven is the third heaven where the most high dwelling. And above the firmament that was over their heads, over the angels' heads, there was a likeness of a throne. It was so glorious I just had, I, it must be a throne. What did it look like, Ezekiel? The appearance was of a sapphire stone. It looked like a jewel, big bright ruby or blue sapphire. Oh, I don't even know what. Listen, it was clean. <laughs> That's how we was there. It was clean. It was clean. Put in that bling bling. <laughs> but Ezekiel, who was on the throne? And upon the likeness of the throne that was above the firmament and over the heads of the angels, who was there? There was the likeness of the appearance of a man above, upon it, the most high. Yahweh, seated upon the circles of the earth, my friend. Not far, not far. Just right over the firmament, looking down and seeing everything that we got going on on this earth. Come back, Hebrews. Come back. Come back to Yahweh. Come back to Yahshua. Come back to Genesis. Come back to creation. Come back to God's cosmological view of the earth. He's not far at all. The day is going to come when the Bible says he will roll up that firmament. That's God. He's the only one that can do it, y'all. 
They've tried. The devil tried. They can't do it, y'all. They can't do it. He going to roll up that sky like a scroll, y'all. The Bible tells us that the great men of the earth going to look up and say, hide us from the face of him with whom we have to do. Who is he? The one seated on the throne. That's all they're going to see. They're going to see what Ezekiel saw. And if they're not right with Jesus, if they never made him their savior, oh, my friend, who? God, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. God wants you to know tonight that he's not far. Make sure you're saved tonight. Make sure you're saved tonight. Call upon him while he may be found. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in his son, Yahshua, Jesus Christ. Confess him as your Lord and Savior while confessing and repenting of your sins. And he'll save you tonight. And lastly, huh? Throw away all the vain philosophies of men. All right? All right? We have a God. His name is Yahweh. We have a book, it's called the Bible. We have a creation, it's called the earth. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for truth tonight. We pray in the name of Jesus that you bless your people for staying here late with me. I'm still on conference preaching time, God. That's why I went long. But I pray you bless them with the rest they need. But I also pray you bless them with not just rest, but with revelation, God. That they would go forth and study to show themselves approved, God. God, that they would open your book again and compare what man said with what God said. And I pray that they would all agree that God be true and every man alive. Pray with me now. Say, God, God I, admit I admit I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I, believe I believe that you died. That you, died. You, were buried, you were buried and you rose again. You rose again. Save me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Use me, Lord. And show me every lie of the devil. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with shalom. Shalom, peace. In Jesus' name.